Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Cassidy. Dr. Mariah. And we are gonna go over everything vascular that impacts women during their pregnancy. Namely, it's the restless <laughs> leg syndrome right. and these numb, tingly hands that oftentimes is misdiagnosed as carpal tunnel. Like we mentioned, this is the shortened version of our continuing education program that we have available for purchase online. This is the short, sweet version, so you can get all that home tips and share them with your patients. Without further ado, let's get yes. Miss Mariah, who is how many weeks pregnant now? 37? 37 tomorrow. So yeah. that's where we're at. She has some swelling in her lower legs. Fingers have not been numb and tingly for no. her, but we'll show you all of it. Yes. To get onto her back safely at this point, we're going to have her on a wedge. I always tell women to scoot their booty all the way back to the wedge before they lay down to relax their head. That way they don't have a sway in their low back and they feel nice and supported. For the forearms, like I said, it's not carpal tunnel. It may present like carpal tunnel, but oftentimes it's these two fingers, got these two, or maybe it's three, or maybe it's all five, or maybe it's just the thumb, or maybe it's just the pointer, or right. maybe it's just tingly <laughs> kind of by the wrist. The distribution of numbness is going to be real wacky. And they'll probably notice some finger swelling as well. The wedding ring won't fit, or if they have any other bracelets yes. they like to wear, they're gonna to start to notice that. We like to use Biofreeze to start the treatment process. It just helps with the skin drag. If they don't like Biofreeze, use lotion. I will say we are going to tape next with Kinesio tape, and um, that tape does not like lotion. So if you're gonna tape, use Biofreeze. And essentially, we're focusing on fluid movement towards the heart, so I will massage yes. Miss Mariah's arms toward her heart. Which, you can go fast, you can go slow. Right. Of course, could be tender if the patient is really swollen. I luckily don't have any swelling in my upper extremities. Um, but also, right, talking about that lymphatic support, so always wanting to push the fluid towards the heart. Yes. Um, and just remembering that you really educate your patients on that so that they aren't pushing towards their wrist. Right, and <laughs> making, worse. right, and then probably doesn't feel as good as well. So there's a lot of ways you can do this. Back of the forearm, you can go to that outer elbow. You can go fast where you're dragging very quickly up and down. You can add pressure. You really can't do it wrong as long as you're working the right areas. To tape, again, super easy. We all know we really can't do this wrong, but your patients don't know that. So tell your patients to tape at home because they think it's really hard and special and it's not. It can be a home tool too and it's really affordable. Hello, Amazon. Okay, so stick the one end, no stick. Done. About 40% pull down to the wrist. I went to outer elbow down to wrist. I could have just went straight down, especially when we're talking vascular carpal tunnel, because all this is doing is helping support that lift of the skin to improve the blood flow, improve the lymph flow, and help with the swelling. If I wanna tape the back side of the arm as well, which for this I often do, I tape it just like I would almost a tennis elbow, outer um, elbow down. Also, sometimes we'll tape even up the tricep. Yes. Especially if they come back and they're like, that wasn't enough. <laughs> so, of course, there could be many factors. Yes, and that's a really good point to make too because we can even do the muscle work on the forearm too. I see it a lot with moms. It's their second pregnancy, so they're also holding a babe yes. or some other child at home. So work up into there. It might be some sore type muscles that are impeding our lymph flow during pregnancy. So many things. So many things. And then of course at home they can be stretching, right? They can be stretching their forearm and general movement will be really helpful to encourage the lymph flow. We're all familiar with elevation too when it comes to extremities and swelling. Um, oh yeah, did you want to, you want to keep me here for a moment? I or? would, because I would love Absolutely. to show them how you can elevate your legs yes. at home because it can be pretty tricky when you're pregnant. I'm going to grab an exercise ball course still on the wedge so that we're not flat on our back yes so that's the tricky issue to get legs elevated right. you also have to wedge the upper body and balls coming in hot I bet that looked real good um, but trick is you can always wedge yourself with pillows you can wedge yourself with anything you could have a smaller ball especially if you're really suffering this is a little but right steep but it works and she could sit here for a minute or two get some of that yeah. blood back even into her upper legs to ankles to help support that. Yep, you got it. She's like, I need these. Keep pumping. Thankfully, <laughs> I truly don't have any main complaints, so nothing about this is uncomfortable for me. 
Maybe if I was here for too long, but. Absolutely. Nice. These balls come in a lot of different sizes, and for people that are struggling with swelling for this long, they're going to want a tool at home that they can use. Right. And without further ado, I'm going to have Dr. Maria flip onto her back so we can focus on the calf work, the work that we do for the restless leg syndrome. And I'm going to toss this ball back, get rid of it. So restless leg syndrome doesn't just affect people during pregnancy, but it is one of the most common times that it happens for people. And it's kind of a mystery. People you know, say it's this thing or that thing, and no one really knows why it happens, and it seems to be varying issues. What is consistent, especially in pregnant women, is that magnesium's low, calcium's low, hydration's poor, and usually helping the fluid movement, the venous return, can help it, and then we will talk about the supplementing things you can recommend too. So we'll have Dr. Maria get into the pregnancy pillow. She's got an extra room for her belly with that lovely drop piece. All the products that you see in this video will be linked in the description below, and most of them outside of the pillow you can actually find on Amazon. So the lower leg stripping, again, you can focus on those tight spots that are traditionally tight. What we like to do is encourage the fluid movement so it's fast with minimal pressure, I would say, light to medium pressure, working on either side of your gastroc muscle because that's where all the veins are going up from the ankle and moving up. Good. Of course, I could adjust through the lower ankle, lower limbs to help improve that lymph flow as well, but we're not going to show that in this video today. Come on up for me, Miss Mariah. I will say one other thing, especially for some restless leg symptoms, um, taping the calf as well has been really beneficial for quite a few of our women. So keep that in mind. Literally just a piece or two of tape straight up the calf. Mm -hmm. Oh, are we going to do that? Yeah, if you don't mind. Oh, I, I forgot know. I forgot when you were face oh, down, yeah. so we'll just show it from but the side. Also because then the muscle can kind of be yes. the ankle. Oh, perfect. So she's putting a little bit of flexion into that ankle. Tape goes on the back of the Achilles and then up the calf with about a 40% stretch. Rub it on. Should stick. And ta-da! Fabulous. So other things that we're going to talk about are more so on the home tip realm. So we talked about the elevation, how really getting your legs above your heart is going to be really helpful. Other things that are simple, compression socks. So simple, they can wear them at night. Talk them into wearing them to bed. It can be really helpful since they're not gonna be moving for an extended period of time. Right. And you will get used to it. Just take some practice. You can also find the compression sleeves for the forearm, of which there are ones with um, the hand piece as well. Um, yeah, I'll keep it there. Yeah. Bracing, of course. Right. And then um, we talk about Epsom salt baths a lot. There is, there's also lotion topically. If somebody doesn't have the bathtub or you just can't get to do it, right. quite honestly. But and we talk about all the details and related to the science, the supplementation, all that in the course. What we will leave you here with this is it's calcium, magnesium, and hydration. So anything you can do to recommend that to your patients, it might be a salt packet, it might be better water, it might be Epsom salt, like you had said, that lotion option. There are a lot out there and most prenatals aren't gonna cover their bases. So just know that it's really important. You mentioned a wrist brace and I'd love to touch on it because a lot of times with conventional carpal tunnel, it is normal to brace the wrist and keep it in mobile. I'm gonna say I love bracing at night with pregnancy. I don't love it during the day because the movement can actually aid in the vascular return Absolutely. and the swelling, hence the symptoms. But wearing it at night can be really helpful for those individuals that like to sleep like a contortionist, yes. AKA me, <laughs> and that bend when they, the wrist is in awkward positions. That's what's aggravating it. So nighttime wrist guard is where I would start for people and then keeping it mobile during the day. Movement is going to be the best thing for these women. Walking, um, just enjoying, stretching, light movement. That's what they need. Do you have anything else to add? No, I was just gonna say thank you so much for the clarification. Bracing at night. Because yeah. again, we know movement is medicine. Yes, and then that wrist compression sleeve, you can wear it as much as you'd like. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and we'll talk more about the pregnancy pains that you treat in month seven.